Hi, welcome to your practice. Today we're doing a 40-minute meditative flow. Unlike meditative flow with fire, this one is also for the seasoned yogi, but for those days when you want to practice but you're just not having a ton of energy. Um, it's always good, especially on those days where you're feeling low or emotionally uh, imbalanced to get on your mat and practice. And this would be the perfect class for that, just to get the blood, the lymph flowing, center your mind, get you into your body, and um, feeling fantastic at the end. So we're going to start today in child's pose. And just resting your forehead, your third eye on the floor, closing your eyes. And just starting to take some deep breaths through your nose. And just feeling those inhales fill your back body, the back side of your heart. And just letting go of any worries, any negativities with those exhales. And really just letting your yoga practice take care of you. So Ujjayi Pranayama, you want to pull that breath to the back of the throat so you get that Darth Vader-esque ocean sound. And just make sure as you do this, your mouth is softly closed, your jaw is empty, your shoulders are relaxed. And just maintaining this mellow vibe. Go ahead, reach your arms forward, rock up onto all fours, and exhale, push back, downward facing dog. And really just surrendering yourself to your breath, to your practice, to the flow. So it might feel good, especially if you're starting in the morning, to walk your legs out, wiggle your hips a little bit, just working through any kinks. And as stuff starts to come up in your mind, just let it come, let it pass. Keep coming back to your breath. Keep coming back to what you're feeling in your body. All right, so from your downward dog, put your left knee on the mat. Send your right leg straight back. So both palms are grounded. And on an inhale, lift your chest and your leg up. So you're arching your spine. And then exhale, round in and really enjoy that stretch and that exhale. Make it full, or complete rather. Inhale, lift up, arch your back. Exhale, round in. Inhale, last one, lift up, arch your spine. Exhale, round in, hold that exhale out, really stretching through the back side of your heart. And then inhale, extend that right leg straight back. Tuck your left toes under, press back to downward facing dog. So by the way, this is the same flow as meditative flow with fire, just the more mellow version of it. Take an inhale as you reach that leg back. Exhale, knee into your chest. Stack your shoulders right over your wrists. Leg goes back, inhale. Knee into your chest. Quietly step that foot between your hands. Step left foot up to right. Inhale, flat back, heart out. Exhale, forward fold. And then big inhale, fly to standing, reach up, energize your side body. Hands to your heart, exhale, right to your center. Inhale, sweep your arms up, sinking that tailbone. Pour your heart out as you exhale. Inhale, halfway up, lengthen. Step to plank and hold upper push-up. So belly lifting up towards the spine. Put your right knee on the floor so your left leg is reaching straight back. Palms are grounded. Take an inhale, lift your chest and your leg, arch. Keep this hand down. Exhale, round in. Inhale, lift up, arch, lubricating that spine. Exhale, round in. Last one. Inhale, lift up. 
Exhale, round in, really stretching through the back side of your heart. And then inhale, extend that left leg back, pause. Tuck your right toes under, press back, downward facing dog. So reaching through that whole inner leg, take an inhale, knee to your chest, shoulders stack right over your wrist. Leg back, inhale. Knee to your chest again. Step that foot through. Step right foot up to left. Inhale, flat back, heart out of your hips. Exhale, forward fold. Big inhale, fly to standing, reach feet through fingertips, get tall. Hands to your heart, exhale all that air. Inhale, sweep it up, gathering energy. Dive it out, exhale till you're empty. Inhale, halfway up, heart out of your hips. Step to plank, pause. So gaze slightly ahead of you, take an inhale. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Release your toes. So taking a few cobras here, elbows are in. On an inhale, low cobra, number one, starting nice and easy. Exhale, chest back down to the floor. Inhale, number two, collarbones spread wide. Exhale, lay back down, a few more. Inhale, number three, perhaps taking it a little bit deeper. Exhale, back down, two more. Inhale, number four, keep some electricity in your legs. Exhale, back down. This last cobra will hold briefly. Inhale, come on up to a sustainable one. Make sure there's no gripping in your glutes. Your shoulder heads are wrapping back and down. Now take one more inhale, scoop your breastbone higher. Exhale, roll over your toes back to downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up behind you. Externally rotate that hip, bend your knee, point your toes. So try to keep your shoulders square as you stretch through your waist and your pelvic girdle. Left heel melting into the mat. Right, so both palms sealed to the floor. With an inhale, extend that right leg, close that hip, neutralize. Knee to your right tricep, shoulders over your wrists. Leg back, full inhale, reset. Knee to your left elbow. Leg back, inhale. Knee into your chest. Use your core. Step that foot between your hands. Release your left knee to the mat. Release those toes, hips melting. Inhale, circle your arms up. Glance up through the ceiling. Exhale, hands lightly to the floor. Step, up, step back to plank, take an inhale. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, cobra, wrap those shoulders. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up behind you. Right, so even though this is a more me mellow flow, doesn't mean you can't put a lot of fire into your breath. Externally rotate that left hip, bend your knee. So using these movements, but at the same time using your breath to build that most important internal fire. Palms grounded, inhale, extend that leg, neutral hips. Knee to your left tricep. Leg back, inhale, knee to your right elbow. Leg back, inhale, knee to your chest. Step that foot between your hands, release your right knee to the mat, release your toes, hips melting. Inhale, circle your arms up, lifting out of your low back. 
Hands lightly to the floor, pause. Tuck your right toes under, press that leg straight, step right foot up to left. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees deeply, drop your hips down. Inhale, Utkatasana. Right, so if you have any sort of low back issues or you're doing this practice pregnant, you would, you would want to take chair pose with your feet hip distance. Now regardless, softening that tail, lifting that low belly, and attempting to bring your arms back in line with your ears without climbing the shoulders up. Now finding your edge, wherever that happens to be, as you squat deeper, reach higher, last inhale, forward folds. Inhale, glance out, flat back. Step two, downward facing dog. Right, from this down dog, put your right knee on the mat just below your hip. Spin your left heel flat, supported sidearm balance. Send your left arm up towards the sky. So part one, you could stay right here if this felt good with your back foot grounded. Otherwise, option, using your core, float your left leg up so it's level with your hip, dorsal flex that ankle. So it's like you're stamping the back wall with your heel. And then from your left shoulder, turn that palm forward and reach that arm out over your ear. So this palm shines towards the floor. However, your heart is just peeking a little bit towards the sky. So breathe into it. Feel that you're really moving energy through your body for three without creating any sort of internal gripping or straining. Left arm back up towards the sky. Take an inhale. Plant that left palm towards or onto the floor. Send your left leg straight back. Neutralize your hips. And then send that right arm straight forward so you're reaching out like you're extending to shake someone's hand. That, those right fingertips become an extension of your waistline. Now ground it through your foundation, soften your tail. Bend that left knee deeply with your right hand. Reach back, grab the top of that foot or that ankle. Bow pulling pose. So there's a dynamic tension between that foot kicking back and quite a lot of energy there and your left palm rooting down. You get this really nice opening through your heart center. Now keep that breath coming for three. So your heart center, your breastbone keeps lifting up. You're very bright. Take one more inhale, reach down the center line. Take these as extended limbs, lift a little bit higher, inhale, Put it all down. Now from here, step back to plank. Shoulders right over your wrists. Lift your right leg up behind you, and that lift is pretty slight, just a few inches. Take an inhale. Knee to your chest. Step that foot between your hands, and come into crescent pose as you inhale. Right, so strong and grounded through your lower body, nice and light through your upper body. Maintaining this lightness, lean forward and launch into warrior three. So if it is one of those kind of mellow, tired days, feel free like Camilla to bring your hands into prayer in front of your heart. Just try to create that, that capital letter T. So your torso is parallel, so is that left leg. Breathe, three. A lot of brightness in your heart centers. Never any collapse there, too. Without making a sound, step back to crescent pose. So arms reaching up towards the sky. So in your mind's eye, just finding your feet, sending down some roots. As you lengthen up through all four corners of your waist, turn your entire torso to the right and open your arms out to the side like warrior two arms. And from your heart center, energize through those fingertips. So just sending beams of energy out. At the same time, keep rising through the crown of your head as you find that deepest twist from your belly button, of course, without going too far. All right, so front knee still bent, face relaxed, shoulders out of your ears. 
Come back to crescent pose. Inhale, gaze up, reach up. Warrior two as you exhale. So get that back foot planted into the floor, emphasizing the pinky edge of that foot a little bit more. So the arch, that foot is zipping up all the way through that left groin. Couple breaths here in warrior two. Feel your tail lengthening down and that pubis is floating up towards your navel. All right, so go ahead and take your right forearm, rest it on your front knee, left arm up towards the sky. So that outer right hip is hugging the center line. Make sure you're not sticking your tush out behind you. And then send that left arm out over your ear, palm shining down. So you're resting on this forearm. Just make sure that shoulder is drawing back, that shoulder head is drawing back, that shoulder blade down the spine. Last three. Just giving that right waistline some nice length as well, too. So stabilizing your legs, slowly inhale, come on up to warrior two. Turn your right palm towards the sky. Take it into a nice reverse warrior. So briefly, just sinking through that left hip, bending that front knee, hold on to this with your upper body, press that right leg straight. Reaching back, take one more inhale, cartwheel your hands to the floor, framing that right foot. Last thing, standing split, launch your left leg up towards the sky. So it should feel really nice to stretch your hamstrings, stretch the hamstring attachments, provided you don't go too far. So orienting from that left hip, deep inside of it, lift up, kiss that edge, last inhale, feet together. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, and just dangle your torso loosely, empty out your shoulders, empty out your neck. Separate your feet hip distance, so hip distance measured by two fists, it's actually quite narrow. Take your peace fingers and hook your big toes, so a lot closer, Camilla. On an inhale, pull your chest out, lift that low belly up, and then exhale, forward fold, bending your elbows out to the side. Okay, so zip up those inner legs. Feel your belly floating up to support your back, any forward bend. And the crown of your head is dripping straight down. In other words, there's no effort in your neck. Four. And just allowing yourself to surrender and deepen with those exhales. Three. And just noticing that your face is just 100% free of tension, too. So taking a different variation, on an inhale, glance out, take a moment to decompress, and then slide both your palms under the soles of your feet, and exhale, fold right back in. So instead of pulling on your shoulders, draw your shoulder blades up your back. So your neck and your ears have ample space for five. And then folks who do a lot of driving or a lot of computer work, relax your wrists. Everyone relax your wrists, but really great for carpal tunnel. Four. Soften the back side of your heart. Three. Just make sure your legs are as straight as you can make them. Two. Lovely, and then pull your hands out from under your feet. On an inhale, glance out, flat back, step to downward facing dog. Taking a vinyasa, inhale, come forward to plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, find that cobra stretching through your entire spine. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, so put your left knee on the mat just below your hips. Spin your right heel flat. 
So ultimately, you want to be lined up, left hand, knee, right foot, down your mat, as if you were to paint a line there. So Camille is going to keep her foot on the floor. It's up to you, if you'd like. Using your core, float your right leg up so it's level with your hip. Dorsal flex that ankle. So you're really working those abductors outside of that leg. And then from your shoulder, just rotate that palm forward and reach out over your ear. So it should feel really quite nice to stretch through the side body. Make sure you have length through your left side body as well for three. That imaginary eye in your heart just peeking a little bit towards the sky. Arm back up. Inhale. Hand flat to the floor, grounded. Close that hip. Right leg reaching straight back. So if you had that foot on the floor, you're going to want to lift it up now. Send your left arm straight forward, finding that handshake position. Again, making sure you're not bowing your back. Your belly floats up, supporting the spine. Softening that tail. Bend your right knee deeply. Reach back, grab a hold of whatever is the available bow pulling pose. So instead of that right knee and thigh dropping down in any way, it doesn't have to lift up a lot, but it's definitely rising. And then keep encouraging and walking that curve higher up your back. Four. So it really turns into literally a heart opening posture. Now foot still kicking. Breastbone lifting, take one more inhale, extend everything down the center line, now working the muscles of your back, lift up a little bit higher, inhale, put it all down. So keeping your wrists under your shoulders, step back to plank, lifting those frontal hips up, lift your left leg just a few inches, take an inhale, knee to your chest, Step that foot through, come into crescent pose as you inhale. Now let your shoulders drop away from your ears, frontal hips lifting, ribs softening. Light as a feather, lean forward, launch into warrior three. Make sure that you have the entire surface area of that left foot grounded. Sometimes there's a tendency to roll to the pinky edge of that foot. So ground the foot, but also zip up the whole inner leg. Three, energize your collarbones, energize your fingertips, two. Very lightly step back to crescent pose. So just take a moment to orient yourself, get your footing, reconnect with your breath. And then as you rise up through all four corners of your waist, turn your torso to the left. Open your arms out to the side like warrior two. And sometimes there's a tendency to lean forward a little bit. So let your left fingertips pull you towards the wall behind slightly so your spine is perpendicular to the floor. And then without forcing, without straining, finding your deepest twist from your belly button, just ringing out a little bit. Still low in your lunge. Come back to crescent. Inhale, look up. Reach those arms up. Open up to warrior two. As you exhale, let's take a couple breaths. So make sure your front knee is tracking with your toes. Your fingers are coming right out of your shoulders, and those shoulder blades are melting down. Just letting go of any gripping, letting go of any unnecessary tension. Right, rest your forearm on that front knee, right arm straight up for now. So that outer left hip hugging the center line, back foot sealed. Send that right arm out over your ear. So one of my personal favorites so as you press that back foot, you can feel your tailbone reaching towards that heel, and you're extending out of both sides of your waist. So again, make sure that left shoulder is not climbing into your ear. For three, your lips are soft, your brow is relaxed, your jaw is empty. Now strong legs, slowly inhale, come on back to warrior two without losing any depth whatsoever. Flip your left palm towards the sky, reverse warrior. 
This is a lovely stretch for that side body, especially the intercostals. Keep reaching with your torso. Press that left leg straight. Extending out of your side body. Take one more inhale. Cartwheel your hands to the floor, framing that left foot. Standing split. Launch that right leg up so that right leg derives its energy from that standing leg. So really pressing out of that foot, pressing out of that hip. As you reach through the ball of this right foot, lift up, kiss that final edge, last inhale, feet together. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Separate your feet shoulder distance or wider so you can sit down into a yogic squat. So turn your toes out to the side as much as you need. Feel your tailbone rooting down and bring those hands into prayer. So your thumbs are drawing back as your sternum lifts up. Soften your chin down and then close your eyes. Just energetically feel your tailbone just sending a cord right down into the core of the earth, plugging in. And as you breathe deeply and listen to that sound, just see how relaxed you can get your face. Just softening the back sides of the eyes, the entire inside of your mouth, your jaw. Nice. And then take one more inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor. Press your legs straight. Turn your toes straight forward. On an inhale, glance out flat back. Step to plank and lower down slow. Inhale, cobra, wrapping those shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up behind you. Take an inhale. Take it into pigeon as you exhale. So right knee to your right wrist. And actually pause for a minute. Melting your hips down, walk your hands back to either side of your hips. So climb up onto your fingertips. You should all already be stretching quite a bit, especially through that left hip flexor. Right, so like a pigeon, puffing up your chest, arching back a little bit. Take an inhale and then exhale. Walk your hands forward. And if you're able to, just rest your head down onto your hands, onto your forearms. If it's too much to reach the floor, you could rest yourself on a block or even some sort of a, a bolster or a blanket or a pillow. You just want to make sure you're really comfortable and your hips are even. So if you do find people at home that you're sinking, and it would typically be towards your right side, you'll want to put something underneath that right hip, like a folded up blanket, or if it was really tilted to the side, a block. few deep breaths. Just tuning yourself to that sound, that ujjayi sound, and that slower, deeper rhythm. One more cycle. And then walk your hands up. As you do, tuck your left toes under. Step back to down dog with your right leg reaching up towards the sky. Externally rotate that right hip. Bend your knee, point your toes, and then go ahead and flip your dog if that feels like the right thing to do. So if it feels precarious, sacroiliac, or something else doesn't like it, hang out here like Camilla. So getting that really nice stretch, one more inhale. And then gracefully flip it back, right leg reaching up. Take one more inhale, put that foot down, reset your dog pose. 
Lift your left leg up behind you. Take an inhale. Slide that knee to your left wrist. Excuse me, right wrist. Left wrist. You guys know what you're doing. Walk your hands back to frame your hips. So this setup, this is sort of the essential part. This is where that right hip is really going to melt down. So puffing your chest up, rolling those shoulder heads back. Take an inhale. Exhale, walk your hands forward and lay yourself out. And at this point, since there's no physical demand on your body, maybe some intense sensations, see if you can start to balance the inhales with the exhales. Relax your shoulders. Just do a scan of your body to see if perhaps there's any places that are gripping. Making sure you're not making fists with your hands. There's no gripping in your face. And really just letting the floor support you. A couple more breaths. And then slowly walk your hands up. Tuck your right toes under. Step back, left leg reaching up towards the sky. Peel that hip open. Bend your knee. Hang out if you like or lightly flip out. So just kind of a fun and funky back bend. Just make sure that shoulder, that right one, is stacked right over the wrist. Nice. One more inhale, fully express. Come on back, last down dog of this class. Just finding those rivers of energy through your arms and through your legs. Hips pressing back, take an inhale. Put your knees on the floor, cross your ankles behind you. Sit down over your feet and then scooch forward on your mat so you're about in the center of it, maybe slightly further forward or slightly beyond the center of your mat. Legs are straight. So we're gonna take it into plow. So sitting up tall, take an inhale. As you exhale, lay down and take those legs right up and over your head, toes to the floor behind you. So just pausing for a moment here. You could, if your toes were touching the floor, interlace your fingers together. Either way, though, you could bend your elbows like Camilla, support your back. Either way, you want to walk your elbows and your shoulder blades closer. So hence the name shoulder stand. So you're really stabilized on your upper back and shoulder area. At the same time, starting to feel this neck lock, which is creating an amazing massage for your thyroid and the parathyroid gland. All right, so using this as a means to cool down, de-excite, go ahead and bend your elbows if you're not already there, support your back, and take your legs straight up towards the sky. So referred to as the queen of yoga asanas, where handstand is the king, the more yang inversion. So a great way to Reduce the effects of gravity and really nourish the heart, nourish the brain, fantastic lymphatic drainage. And very calming for the nervous system and really perfect right before Shavasana. So make sure you're not gripping your glutes, a sense of being lifted by your ankle bones. And we'll take another minute to be here. I'll be quiet for that minute. So you can just kind of relax here and center yourself in your breath as we prepare for rest.
And then with your navel kissing the spine, exhale, lower your toes back down to plow. Release your hands flat to the floor and exhale, roll your spine right out into happy baby, which I think feels amazing after shoulder stand. So through the insides of your knees, grab the outer edges of your feet, keep your low back, your tailbone rolling down. So enjoy that. Relax your neck, relax your shoulders. So these guys are still breathing ujjayi. We're gonna let that go in just a couple moments. Enjoy it while it lasts. And then take your hands to your inner thighs. Spread your legs out to a wide straddle. If you're feeling a little more open, you could take your peace fingers, hook your big toes, and stretch like that. Just make sure your low back stays down. Neck soft, shoulders soft. And making sure your face is completely relaxed. Perfect. Hug your knees into your chest, keeping that right knee hugged in. Send your left leg straight out onto the floor. Open that right arm out to the side like a wing and exhale, spinal twist. I'm just feeling that DNA like coil up your back. And then come on back to the center, hug your right knee in, followed by your left. Give them both a little bit of a squeeze to neutralize your spine. And then reach your right leg straight forward, left arm out to the side. Exhale, final spinal twist. So even on those days where you're feeling kind of funky, tired, not in the mood, it's good to do something. This is the perfect class for those days. You will always feel better after doing some yoga. And yoga ultimately gives us that adaptation energy to meet the demands of our life. So whatever time you take out of your life for yoga is really contributing to it tenfold. Come on back to the center. Hug your knees into your chest. This is it. Lift your forehead towards your knees. Last burst of energy. Take an inhale. Squeeze. Exhale. Let it go. Shavasana. So take up as much space as you want. Palms towards the sky in a gesture of receptivity. At this point, releasing control of your breath. Effort has been spent, the doing has been done. Let's take some time to rest and rejuvenate. Thank you so much for tuning in. Namaste.